Hello everybody, coming up for you today, there is a huge debut in AEW, the dreaded Rona strikes down WWE, Ruby Soho advances to the TBS title tourney final, and AEW has booked its biggest ever rematch yet. Hello, I am since Cleary Festive Us Adam from the North Pole, and this is your wrestling news because as we've discussed all week it's down we're down at the bare bones here at rock culture it's just me on my lonesome because everybody's now everybody's now doing festive stuff they're building snowmen oh they're putting them into pies out they're wrapping all their presents but only i know the true meaning of christmas and that is aggregated wrestling content my name is adam cleary and this is the news. All right, we start with the biggest story in the entire world of professional wrestling, probably today, and I would imagine for the rest of the week. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you might already know about it, but whatever, here we are. Kyle O'Reilly, yes, the Kyle O'Reilly, recently allowed to leave under the expiration of his WWE contract. His time in NXT ended, everybody wondered, where would he go? But we should not have wondered, should we? Because two of his best pals in the whole world were in AEW, and the three of them, Bobby Fish, Adam Cole, and Kyle O'Reilly, reunited on last night's episode of AEW Dynamite. It's genuinely, it never, ever doesn't land this. When a big name, somebody who we love from whatever other company, turns up in AEW with a clear storyline and something fun for them to do, it never loses its impact. And last night was absolutely no exception. Now, as you may know, Adam Cole was wrestling Orange Cassidy, freshly squeezed your pal and mine. Bobby Fish heads to the ring to cause a distraction. And you could have been forgiven for thinking they were just trying to do a bit of a bait and switch. They were just trying to tease you on the idea that O'Reilly might be arriving, but no, 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 no. No foul play whatsoever. There he was at ringside. He absolutely lays out Orange Cassidy and Adam Cole picks up the win. And the three of them, the undisputed era boys, which they almost certainly can't be caught now, stand in the ring and are reunited. No sign of Roddy Strong. Obviously, he's still over in NXT. There's probably no chance whatsoever of him joining anytime soon. But there you are. For anybody who dreamed of doing those match cards that was Kenny in the Bucks versus Undisputed Era, all the fantasy booking ideas you had to pull them out of NXT and put them in another promotion, that's, that's 2022 for you. You can now fantasy book them against anybody you like outside of the dub. This is a... Uh, this... It would be nice to say you were more surprised, but this was just such an obvious move for Kyle O'Reilly, an obvious pickup for AEW, that there is a relative lack of surprise. So fair play for AEW for not trying to just make a mystery when there didn't need to be one. The boys are there. This is going to cause obvious tension between the super click, as they're known, and just yet another booking move by the company that inspires debate, excitement, anticipation, and enthusiasm about the product as a, I'm thrilled by this as pretty much everybody in the whole world is. All right, that's the good news. Now for the slightly not so good news. According to PW Insider, several WWE on and off screen talents have tested positive for COVID-19. Now I'll lay this out right at the start. They have not named any names. If you want to go look through the last week's television and try and work out who was missing when maybe they shouldn't have been, that is totally on you. I will not be getting drawn into speculation over over people's health, but according to PW Insider, there have been a number of positive cases. They've encouraged everybody to get tested and that has revealed even more positive cases. Now, this is obviously not something anybody wants to revel in, but as we go into this next wave of all of this, apparently according to the reports, us in the UK were about a month further down the line than the US. And of course, South Africa was about a month further down the line than us. There is a big wave coming through the United States and that is obviously going to impact everything that is trying to run business as normal if you recall your mind back to the first waves of the pandemic wwe was struck down time and time again stars missing all over the place having to pull booking ideas and impromptu shows out of their hoops all the time and the worry is that january of next year which starts in precisely about eight days or something that's going to be pretty much all over the place as people pick up positive results here and there now this omicron thing I should say, it's supposed to be a lot milder. There's less There's less worry for people's health uh, than there has been with previous things, but it's still a positive test. It's still a positive test. You've still got to then go isolate. You've still got to take yourself out of the picture. So we're hoping this isn't too disruptive for WWE's plans leading into the Royal Rumble, but obviously that is a secondary concern to the health of its performers. I would be worried about any kind of live event with anything to do with crowds and anything that's close contact over the next two months, but that's just... 
that's how it is. Apparently, it's already started in WWE. So to anybody here who has tested positive, we wish them all the best. All right, some news that's positive in another way now, and that is that AEW have given us a wonderful gift. But specifically, they've given me the best birthday gift they could possibly have given because AEW Dynamite makes its debut on the TBS network on January the 5th, my actual birthday. Can you believe it? And as a lovely present for me specifically and nobody else, they have booked a rematch between Brian Danielson and Adam Page for the AEW World Championship. Now, you don't need me to tell you that they recently went to a 60-minute time limit draw and it was one of the greatest wrestling matches you have ever seen in your life. I think it was another five-star thing they got from the Wrestling Observer and we were all over it here saying how great it was. And we're going to get another go of this. Danielson gets another shot on Dynamite on my birthday. I don't know if I've mentioned that part for the belt. Now, this time... There is a caveat, because they don't want to go to another 60-minute time limit draw. If they cannot be separated after the time, Danielson has proposed they have three judges at ringside who will decide on a winner. Now, AEW has kind of gone down this road before. There have been judges involved in things, but as far as I'm aware, and I'm sure you'll correct me in a split second in the comments if I'm wrong, we haven't actually gone to the judges. They have just been a swinging sword of Democles hanging there the whole time, so you don't exactly know which way the finish is going to be. I think that'd be ex excellent. I don't think they would do a changeover of the belt on television by judges' decision. That seems like a huge creative decision in terms of booking, but this is AW. They do like to prove that you don't know what they're going to do, so I don't know. I just look, the bottom line here, I think... I've been really good this year, and I deserve a birthday treat. So however the match comes out, whatever the idea behind it is, whatever booking directions they go with it, it's just, it's nice for me. Anyways, if you do want to write that down, January the 5th, you can send me all kinds of nice messages. But that's obviously, it's a little way away. We'll get Christmas and New Year out of the way first. I'll, I'll remind you nearer the time. But, little something for everybody on that day, as well as just the joy of my birth. Danielson versus Page. Oh. All right, one last small final bit. Pretty much all the news is simply just what happened on Dynamite last night as it was quite an interesting show. I should have just done an entire news piece on CM Punk wears fun face paint, but never mind, here we are. This is the main headline. Ruby Soho has advanced to the final of the TBS television title Tony, and I keep getting my tongue tied when I'm saying that, so I think that's correct. Anyway, yes, yeah, she beat Nyla Rose. She managed, after a sluggish back-and-forth match, to hit her with that no-future Enziguri kick, and that puts her into the final on a collision course with the winner of either Thunder Rosa or Jade Cargill. And I, I would offer the suggestion that there's no bad match there. I would watch the hell out of Ruby Soho versus Thunder Rosa, and I would watch the hell out of Ruby Soho versus Jade Cargill. And the best thing about that is, of those three remaining women... I can't even tell you who I think is going to win. It feels like Soho, she's got a bit of momentum, but why would you have Thunder Rosa in this if you're not just going to have a winner? And then why again would you have Jade Cargill, who all she does is win, pretty much. So it's an excellent scenario they booked themselves in. I think this tournament's been really well done from start to finish. We said you were talking about it on the podcast yesterday. It's been a tremendous success, and whatever happens now, the final is going to be... Allow me to just... Let me just gesticulate this rather than explain it. It's going to be... Mwah! 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 Right, and of course we have got some time for your Twitter questions as I put my feet up and just get my laptop out because I'm incredibly low effort this week. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Kenny Fraley says, I know you answered me yesterday, I'm a giving, giving man, but I have a question, non-wrestling related. Even being alone in the office, are you having a good hot? Oh, Kenny! I am having a good holiday, thank you very much. I have secretly really enjoyed this week of it just... It's a, and to be fair, I should stress, it hasn't just been me here. Sidgwick is around doing his bits and pieces. Me and him have been doing the podcast together. I've got the wonderful James Hebel. James, put a picture of yourself up somewhere. That guy, he's been editing all the videos despite not being a wrestling fan. He's been muddling through doing his best. And there's a few... There's, it's a big company, you know. It might just be me on wrestling doing all the news, but there's... There's one or two others who've been around, so it's been lovely. And plus, I feel, if you can't tell by the hat, incredibly festive. Lovely question. Thank you very much. Uh, right. Thick boogs again. Really getting a bit of a little, nice little group of people this week. Anyway, forming a little cabal. Anyway, do you think Kyle signing with AEW will have any effect on whether Gargano signs? Oh, you would think 
you would think yes, because there is only so many spots, and there's only so much TV time, and there's only so many positions at decent places on the roster. We did speculate that maybe the reason Kevin Owens didn't go there was because he's looked at the roster and just thought, it's so stacked right now, I can either go there and muddle around in the mid-card, or WWE can stay here and make me incredibly rich doing pretty much the same thing. So, I, I, I've got some flack in the past for saying they should just stop getting ex-WWE guys for a bit, and I realise, I actually realised once they did the Danielson and the Cole thing, it doesn't matter at all. You can just get whoever you want. Wrestlers are just wrestlers at the end of the day. But I think if I was Gargano, I would go and do some other stuff and then be a really exciting acquisition somewhere down the line. The guy's got time on his side, basically. And there's so much going on at the minute. People want to see Danielson in the title picture. Paige is starting what we hope will be a, an incredible run. Punk's going to slowly work his way up there. Cole is there now. There's, if you want to go and be a big deal, I think you do kind of have to wait for a little while. Right, well, that was everything we've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed the news, or as it might as well have been called, the AEW Dynamite Roundup. Haha, <laughs> what fun. Anyway, let's know what you made of it all in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm back tomorrow. I'm back tomorrow. It's Christmas Eve. I'm back tomorrow. But then, unbelievably, I have actually got Christmas Day off and Boxing Day off, and then the subsequent two days after that. But then I'll be back for that nice little gap between Christmas and New Year. And we can have a lovely, fun time again. But tomorrow, I have a little special surprise planned for all of you since we've had such a lovely, lovely week together. But you have to find out what that is tomorrow. You have to come back, won't you? It's a bit of bit of positive engagement I'm doing there. But in the meantime, yes, of course, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This has been the What Culture Wrestling News, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.